Precision haircut, anyone? To understand precision cutting, let's begin where the concept was created. For centuries, hair has evolved from necessity to being on the cutting edge of fashion, styles, and culture. For some, it's one of the most important parts of their appearance. Give me a head with hair, long, beautiful hair. A lot of us know firsthand what it's like to get a bad haircut. Probably when the perm phase. Oh, when he had, yeah, the, the helmet. <laughs> My husband would call it the square. Very dark, very rooty. Yes, not, not pretty. But few of us know how to get a good one. In the 30s, a lot of women went for the curly look, a lot of ways on top, curls on bottom, or just the simple bun. For men, it was going to the barber and simply taking the clippers and shaving away. Well, it ain't exactly like Floyd the barber back home would have done it, but I promise just your first time. Three decades later, the Sassoon movement. What he gave to women is bigger than just being a hairdresser. In 1960, Vidal Sassoon introduced precision cutting. He was like a piece of art in motion. His artistic style changed the world with a pair of scissors using a method unlike anything seen before. I wanted to eliminate the superfluous and get down to the basic angles of cut and shape. Now let's cut to today. The Sassoon legacy lives on. It's methodical, intentional, well thought out, and well executed. Precision cutting is knowing a haircut on paper, somewhat like using a blueprint to build a home. It's knowing haircutting as a whole. The foundations create a cut designed around hair texture, length, and one that is suitable for the specific client. This allows you the creative control to develop a look instead of merely recreating one. It's using the key elements of creating a style, using discipline, geometry, skull shape, and control. Know the skull structure. We use several areas of the skull as reference points and areas where we want to distribute weight. This helps create the ideal cut for the head shape. For instance, the occipital bone forms the back of the head. The crown separates the back of the head from the top of the head. The mastoid separates the side of the head from the back of the head. The parietal ridge forms the top corners of the head. It separates the top of the head from the sides. A key dynamic in precision cutting is elevation. It's defined as lifting the hair away from where it would naturally fall. Layman terms, up or down on a vertical plane. Elevation controls which technique you are applying to the haircut. There are three techniques. A line is when the hair is cut on the same plane at zero degrees elevation. You can see where zero degrees is on this diagram. When we diagram, we use three color codes. Red defines the direction of the hair, blue, the section we are creating, and black for the outline or major section of the head. Now back to elevation. If we elevate the hair one to 89 degrees, we get graduation. Graduation is classified into two groups, external and internal. Going back to our skull structure, external graduation is cut below the occipital bone and parietal ridge. This is the heaviest of graduation, meaning the weight sits below the occipital bone. This is being lifted from 1 to 45 degrees. Internal graduation is cut above the occipital bone and parietal ridge. The weight sits more on the top. This is elevated from 46 to 89 degrees. So what happens if you elevate the hair 90 degrees and above? The definition of a layer is a removal of weight created by holding the hair out from the head at 90 degrees or higher. This technique controls the movement and texture of the hair. There are three classifications of layers. A flat layer is created by pulling the hair out at 90 degrees from the head. This is one of the longest layers. Convex layers follow the head shape. Lengths are even from the top of the head to the bottom. Concave layers work from shorter lengths toward the top and retain a longer length through the bottom. Concave layers are the most extreme layer, also referred to being anti-head shape. A convex and concave layer cannot be created without the use of over-direction. This is when the hair is pulled away from where it would naturally fall, left or right, on a horizontal plane. Over-direction defines the shape you are creating. The more you over-direct, the more shape you create. The hair gets longer in the opposite direction you are pulling. Body position is a major factor. If X equals body position, Y equals over direction, and Z shape, the equation would be X plus Y equals Z. This now leads us to the shape of the cut we desire. There are three main shapes, round, square, and triangular. 
A round shape descends from front to the back, getting longer. A triangular shape is just the opposite. It progressively gets longer from the back to the front. A square shape is designed to balance out the roundness of the head with corners reaching equal lengths in the front and the back. No precision cut can be created without understanding how to section the hair. Horizontal sectioning tends to build weight, while vertical sectioning helps remove weight. Diagonal, yeah, it's somewhere in the middle. As you get closer to vertical, the hair gradually loses weight. As you get more horizontal, the hair gets heavier. When cutting a round, square, or triangular line, there is no elevation and you are standing right in front of the hair you are cutting. If you're trying to create a round, square, or triangular graduation, you elevate each between 1 and 89 degrees. Body position, elevation are key. For round, your body position is in front, pulling the hair in the back towards you. Triangular, just the opposite. A square graduation, you stand right in front of what you're cutting. With round, square, triangular layers, your elevation is 90 degrees or above. Two other key elements, tension and elasticity. The tension placed on the hair is a major factor when determining the characteristics of the cutting line. You can achieve tension by the use of your hands, fingers, and combs. A fine tooth comb gives you strong tension. A moderate tooth, moderate tension. A wide tooth comb, the least amount of tension. If you use your two fingers, you get a great amount of tension. But if you use the back of your hand, you get the most amount of tension you can achieve. And then there's elasticity. The hair's ability to stretch up to 50% when wet. Think about it. If one side of your hair is dry, the other wet, your cut will not come out even. Whether it's a desire to stand out in a crowd or a desire to make a statement in how you look, one thing is certain. Precision cutting is making a statement and becoming more desired around trendsetters throughout the world. It's a craft using knowledge to its highest level, and it's a craft making a statement.